fallen leaves. Just yesterday, the sun was shining. Golden aspen leaves glittered under the deep blue sky while birds sang, elk bugled, and the glassy lakes reflected it all as if to say, look at all this. It was as if the whole world had finally been set right. Then, around midday, clouds could be seen building just behind the mountains. Each hour, they grew in size and darkness until their blackness hid the sun. Soon, a violent and bitterly cold wind rushed down the slopes, through the valleys and into town. It snatched the golden leaves and hurled them to the ground. Animals took shelter and visitors left the park as the trees groaned under the strain of the howling wind. This was the beginning of winter's offensive, robbing the world of color and joy. It will be a long time until any color returns, certainly not for at least six months, perhaps seven. We are like those leaves that are held on by a tiny brittle stem. How fragile and precious our little lives are. Just when all seems to finally be going well, we are caught off guard by tragedy. We find that our security was an illusion. No matter how hard we cling to life, we are not as powerful as we want to believe. Perhaps some of us will hold on longer than those next to us. But in the end, we will all fall. The winter is inevitable. Yet the trees know something we do not. They know about winter, the loss, the pain, the loneliness. But they also know about spring. They put their hope not in endless winter, but in the coming resurrection of May and June.